Hi, Rob Gamel here. Welcome again to the Small Business Acceleration Program and Workshop. This is Module 6, the final module. Today, we're wrapping up the course with the final steps before launching your remarkable offer. We want to turn it into your signature remarkable thing. More importantly, a thing based on thinking differently about what your business offers, offers and for whom, so you can do it better with less effort and more profitably. So why are you here? Just a quick recap. You want your business to be in a better place so you can be in a better place, right? And your path me past methods weren't getting you there. So let's quickly review the strategy for lifting you to this new place you want to be in. We start at the end. Of course, we do things a little differently here, right? So we want to start with pleased customers, clients, and patients. Ones that are so pleased they keep coming back. They're comfortable with your cost and they tell others. They become part of your sales team. So you're here to think differently about how to get there and how to get there quicker to that place where you've got fans and customers who are working together. So a quick review of what you've learned. In weeks one to two, we focused on what you do best, who values it, how to focus it, um, and how to um, make some improvements too. So that's done. In weeks three to four, we reviewed how to develop a remarkable new product or service, something that elevates a part of your business or what you do several rungs up the ladder, and then possibly become a model uh, that can be used to improve the entire business. And then last week and this week, we've focused in on how to make it remarkable, how to market your offer, and how to package it for launch. So this week, in the final episode, we're really zeroing in on the launch part and packaging you for success, okay? So when you signed up, I promised you'd learn how to create more value by moving up the experience economy ladder from um, extracting commodities like coffee beans, Making, serve, making goods, that type of thing, delivering services, and depending upon what type of business you're in, potentially even guiding and delivering transformations for your customers, clients, and patients. So this evolution has been all about moving up this scale of not just activity and action and work that you're putting in, but also improving the value of what you're doing while you're differentiating what you're doing. The net result of this effort is we have now positioned you at upper levels of opportunity and potential profits for you. So this is the place where happiness can be found. While I agree it's true money doesn't guarantee happiness, I can speak from experience that it sure makes it easier. Okay, so when you signed up, I promised you'd learn how to say goodbye to the things that hold you back. So you did a ton of work, a lot of work. I, I, I did it too, so I know how much work it was and, um, it, and how much effort you put into it. And what we were trying to do is uncover the gems in what you do that could be translated into a remarkable competitive advantage that would be unique to you, something that you and only you and your business would own. Along the way, you learned why Apple is so hard to beat compared to the competition. And you know now that it's because they do more deep thinking than anyone else does. And now you've experienced that. So granted, it's been hard, but that's where the benefits are and that's where the insights that give you that unfair com competitive advantage come from. So in the process, you listed everything you could think of that you do, right? And then you did some ruthless editing to narrow it down to the most important parts. Now, and then you did it again from the audience point of view. 
boy, that was a lot of work, okay? But now, you know, as I promised, you'd, uh, with the three takeaways, you know how to put that to work. So we went through the, uh, the example of Apple stores and talked about how Apple stores have been outthinking the competitors now for almost 20 years and how you can take those lessons to align what you do with your best customers and clients needs and desires so that you're in sync with them and vice versa. We also reviewed how to establish credibility with first and last impressions, particularly designed to automatically attract and keep high profit clients and customers. And then lastly, to simplify your lives and the experiences for your customers, et cetera, we taught you how to focus like Apple does on doing fewer things, doing them better and generating remarkable profits as a result. Okay, so I just want to quickly review some of the stuff just so it's top of mind as you complete your assignments. So remember how um, we went through the pyramid exercise that revealed what you do and the rational and, and emotional benefits that derive from it. And then how we connect the dots from the, uh, the, on the functional level to the rational level to the emotional level. And then how to go through and simplify your focus on just doing what uh, those things that make the biggest difference and have the greatest impact. We even flipped the pyramid and looked at it from the top down through your audience lenses, further simplifying your efforts and improving what you do and making it yet more remarkable. The net result, of course, was being able to say goodbye to some of those things you're doing and realizing some things that you don't need to do anymore because they're less relevant to your um, target audiences. Okay? So all this was all about migrating this path up to a higher level. With this effort culminated in the creation of your message platform. This is the foundation for your marketing and sales stories. It also helps validate them so that you're more confident in them. And if you believe in them, your audience is also highly likely to. In this instance, you know, we had reviewed what these might be for a real estate agent. You know, the vision might be the dream home effortlessly bought. So the promise, what's delivered day in, day out, even on unremarkable days, is personal home matchmaking. The hook, to make it unique and more catchy and memorable, high-tech, high-touch home matchmakers. And then, of course, we created some claims and supporting proof points, including high-tech matchmaking, high-touch matchmaking, and of course, five-star negotiation rankings. So these, hopefully you've completed this assignment at your end. We then um, mined the work that you had done to uncover um, and inspire ideas for improvement in what you do and what your team might be doing. And to help you identify the best ones in creating this remarkable offer. So here you see some examples of that work. So we generated an awful lot of raw ideas from that work, revealing the best, and then using those to inspire this remarkable offer. We also spent some time looking at examples of other people's ads, marketing ideas, copywriting, that type of thing. And you heard me making an impassioned plea to steer clear of the sea of sameness so that you don't get lumped into this undistinguished and undifferentiated mass. We want you to be doing things so iconically that you pop out amongst the crowd and you become the first choice that people consider when they're trying to address whatever their need or want is, okay? So then we rolled up our sleeves and we started building the marketing tools. The ones that are more effectively get you and your audience to pay attention, 
to remember you and eventually call on you when they're in that moment of need. So to get there, we go, went through exercises that showed you how to put wheels on your marketing with more relevant and iconic um, naming, iconic descriptions, and so on. In this instance, you know, uh, the example was dental health care. And the offer was a ever bright smile remedy. The iconic description was the two minute, two month dental brightening treatment. And then of course we talked about and described the kind of imagery we wanted to bring to it. We even got contextual. We got into writing an elevator pitch and even event conversation script so that um, whatever the appropriate occasion or context was, you were prepared to be able to engage with other people in the right context and make it and work it in so that it didn't feel like a sales pitch. It felt more like establishing um, a relationship that could be maintained and then nurtured into a business relationship. So you're nearly ready to launch your offer. In fact, you could right now, even without doing the rest of this stuff. Um, however, your odds of success will be drastically improved with a strong first impression, one that marries your compelling words with an equally commanding set of imagery. Okay, so we've, we cited as one example this fantastic billboard that, uh, that Mary's Pizza Shack had produced. Now, what we want to be focusing in on today is how to package some iconic imagery um, in this last session. And I'm going to show you some, simply, some simple tools that will make it easier to create that imagery today. Also, this is kind of a bonus benefit. We're going to teach you how to use how Facebook ads can be used to start spreading the word as quickly as today if you're, the, if you're willing to jump on it. So I'll be getting to that in a few minutes. So first, I want to review the final steps that you'll need to be completing. And following the, uh, the webinar today, I'll be sending you an email that has a checklist so that you've got a handy reminder of the final things you want to do. So first on the list, finish your copywriting, review it, do, send, do any polishing that you want to do, make sure you're comfortable with it. Then finish your marketing plan. Uh, sometimes people like to put that into a spreadsheet. It's a great way to uh, do it. I've done that way, in the, that way in the past. It also makes it easy to track any associated um, expenses with it. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on this product. It's actually an online web app called Canva. It's available at canva.com. It's the favorite tool of millennials for doing their DIY, do-it-yourself um, graphic design and advertising. So it's very simple to use, and I'll walk you through some examples of how I've used it. And then you'll be able to use that to create your simple imagery. Um, templates are included for vertical, horizontal formatting, et cetera, et cetera, and the appropriate media. And then you'll be prepared to take those Im images and paste them or upload them into um, your email, your Facebook page, website, landing pages, whatever it might be. And then, of course, you can add your new text, including the offer, so that you're ready to send it or publish it to your target audience. Okay? So the next thing that I always like to mention, uh, that we want to be smart about all of this, right? This is all part of thinking differently. Now, this can be an awful lot of work uh, if you don't automate it or semi-automate it and you don't think about how to... Um, do it more intelligently and efficiently. So these are the things that I keep in mind. I like to think of my marketing efforts as a marketing engine. So I've set up the tasks and the timing in Google Calendar. Now, some of you um, would prefer Outlook. Some of you might 
use other tools. Any of those that you're comfortable with can work just fine. The other thing you should be able to do is reduce the amount of hours you need to devote to this on a weekly basis. I like to allocate two to four hours, which is, you know, if you work a 40 hour week, I wish I only worked a 40 hour week, but I'll get there. Anyhow, if you work a 40 hour week, you should be able to get by just allocating five to 10% of your time to these marketing activities. And as long as you've set everything else up, you should be achieving uh, remarkable results from it. Now, the other thing you want to do, I haven't been clicking here, but uh, let me get caught up. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to be repeating what you're doing to your target audience. Trust me, very few of them will be annoyed by this. Most of them will actually appreciate the repetitiveness because the fact is, and studies have proven this, Humans need to see an ad or a marketing pitch or an, an announcement or an offer or invitation to do something six to eight times before it will dawn on them that they should really pay attention to it or they should take some action and consider it. Um, so that's really important to do on a repeat basis. This also means, by the way, that when you start putting your marketing stuff out there, don't expect your phone to start ringing off the hook and people showing up at your door and your email mailbox getting filled up. It takes time. Even Google, you know, I read a book about how they started Google and they all agreed it started with a trickle, but look at where they are now, okay? The other thing that's important to do is continually seek feedback. Measure of the results of what you're doing. Always observe, watch what's going on with customers, clients, patients. Read between the lines. You'll get so much insight and so much additional information um, that you can use to improve what you're doing and pass that on to your team. And then this is a very Apple thing. Iterate. Iterate as appropriate. You know, if you're Apple, you're continually iterating. If you're an online app or business, you're continually uh, um, iterating. Um, you don't have to be iterating every day, but just think about continuous improvement. And then, of course, there are online tools, and of course, there are paper and pencil and everyday, you know, real life tools that can allow us to automate or de delegate the tedious and repetitive tasks, the, the ones that don't require some of our different thinking. And then lastly, of course, keep thinking differently about the never-ending improvement and focusing what you're doing and simplifying it wherever you can, okay? Um, lastly, the delivery is key. Delivering wonderful and remarkable experiences um, is what can, what's going to keep people coming back and literally remarking on it to other people they um, interact with. Okay. So the other thing I want to quick review of uh, is to remember the ranked list of marketing tactics. So again, the number one list in terms of efficiency and return on investment that you put into it is personal selling, word of mouth, that type of thing. Number two is event marketing. Number three, email marketing. Number four is making sure your website does a good job of marketing for you 24-7, 365 days a year and that the key marketing messages and related imagery is up to date there for you. So, and then of course, advertising. Advertising works, that's why so many people continue to do it. Now, of course, my favorite is Facebook advertising and you'll get a, a dose of that in just a few minutes. Uh, there's also outdoor advertising that works well and local media, print, online, that type of thing, including radio and such. 
But remember this as you're considering this list. So the most efficient in terms of the effort required and the cost from your perspective are those at the top of the list. However, those are the least scalable. They require the, mo the largest amount of your personal time. As you move down the list, they become increasingly more efficient from a scalability perspective and from an investment perspective. So you can be making more impressions um, and you can, it's easier to repeat the behavior, increase frequency and reach and so on. Those are some marketing terms. Okay, so I think you get my point here. So I'd like to take this moment and introduce you to Alex Afterman. So he is our guest expert who's gonna share what, his, what he knows and what you might find most valuable um, in learning about and deploying Facebook ads. So I'm gonna let Alex take over the presentation for a few minutes. Alex? Great, hello everybody. Thanks very much, Rob, really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Alex Afterman, as it says on the slide. So I am the founder and chief strategist of 1111 Digital, which is a Facebook ads agency. Um, I won't get into the whole long bio, but prior to that, I was the head of marketing for an international publicly traded digital publisher. And all marketing sat under me, SEO, um, anything inbound, um, including Facebook, organic, and ads. And I really enjoyed Facebook ads, and I saw the, the potential there. And that's why I, I left and formed my own business and really niched down into ads. Okay, so oops, let's make sure this works. Hmm. Hold on, I'm trying to advance. Okay. Okay, so here's, here's, the, here's the spiel. Um, we're gonna talk about why Facebook ads are great for small business and local business. Um, we're gonna look at a basic and advanced campaign and kind of talk about what those are and what makes one basic and one advanced, what the pros and cons are of each. Um, and then look at kind of the, the, how you succeed at Facebook ads is actually about more than just the ads. Okay, so looking at why Facebook out of all the other channels out there available to you. Uh, so for one thing, there's an unprecedented combination of targeting and geographic options. So you can really drill down and find exactly the right audience. Um, the, 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 uh, the targeting by interests and demographics and previous behavior, like, you know, there's been a lot of stuff in the news about maybe Facebook knows too much about you, but the advantage for us as advertisers is that's, that makes it very easy for us to find the right people for our products and services. Um, there are easy tools to help you get con the contact info for leads. So there's a product I particularly like called Lead Ads, um, which is an ad product um, with a, you know, it looks like any other ad um, with a call to action of sign up. Um, when you tap on the ad on a phone, um, a contact form opens up and it's pre-filled with your information because Facebook already has all of your, your information. So you don't have to, or the user doesn't have to type in a bunch of stuff. And the, the, the less friction you give people, the more signups you'll get. So it's a very effective product for gathering email addresses and leads. Um, ad quality score. So this is something that you don't see. It runs in the background. Um, but Facebook assigns every ad a quality score based on how um, users that see the ad respond to it. So this is, do they engage with it? Do they give it positive feedback, negative feedback? Um, even things like, do they scroll by it fast or do they slow down and look at it? Um, and this gives you an even playing field with the big brands because um, Facebook, unlike other channels, including Google, um, they take the ad quality score into account in a major way in their algorithm. And it allows you to, if you have an ad that users are responding with better than an ad from a big brand like uh, Coke, Chev you know, one of the car companies, uh, people that are spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on Facebook ads, but if your ad is, has a better quality score because users respond to it better, you will win the, those auctions against those bigger brands. Um, so stepping back quickly, Facebook is an auction process. Um, you, everybody bids on ad space and um, there's a winner. 
and they, that, that ad gets shown. And so with Facebook, um, the quality of your ad and how users respond to it plays a huge part in that, even more than the bid, um, which makes it unique and allows you to really compete with anyone uh, on, for your Facebook ads. Um, and finally, it allows you to proactively seek out your audience. So I get asked a lot, um, you know, what's the difference between Google ads and Facebook ads, or should I choose Google ads or, should, and, or Facebook ads? So um, the, the main difference is that um, Google uses, uh, Google allows you to find people that are kind of already looking for you. Um, so it's people that are searching for your product or service already, which is great, right? They're searching for it. That's awesome that you can find them. But um, the percentage of people that would want your product or service, but isn't actively looking for it is much larger than the percentage of people that is for most brands. Um, so uh, Facebook allows you to reach the people that don't know they want what you're offering until they see it. And you know, where else? Facebook has 2 billion active users per day. Um, no matter what the product or service, no matter whether you are hyper local or national or international, um, your audience is on Facebook. It's just a matter of finding them and getting the right messaging in front of them. Okay, so let's look at a basic campaign. So this is a campaign that I ran for a dentist in North Carolina. Um, so we ran one ad. Um, it is a lead ad, right? You can see that little sign up call to action. Uh, we tested a couple of audiences in this case. Uh, we tested an interest-based audience. So um, they kind of gave me the, the demographics and interests they, of their, you know, their typical customer. And then we tested a product called a lookalike audience where um, they, give, they gave me a list of their current customers and we tell Facebook, go find more people like that. And in some cases it's very effective and in some cases it's less effective. So we, we trialed those against each other to see which got us the best results. Uh, this is a single touch point with the audience. So this is a this is a pretty simple campaign. The the hook is the free teeth whitening for life to the first twenty five people to respond. So we're putting a little urgency in the ad. Um, in truth, you know, behind the curtain, the we're gonna we keep running it even after we get twenty five people, but the urgency helps. <laughs> um, and uh, people tap on that sign up. And as I mentioned, because it's a lead ad, their information is already filled. All they have to do is hit submit and their information is sent to the dental office who then calls them to book the appointment. Uh, this is a low barrier to entry, right? So lead ads are pretty simple to set up and doing one ad with one image and some copy is not very difficult. Um, it's not too time consuming. This is, you know, when Rob mentioned you could potentially get something out today if you were motivated, you could get something like this out today if you really wanted to. Um, and it's cost effective. So a single campaign like this can be as little as a few hundred dollars. Um, in this particular case, we were getting leads for about somewhere between 10 and $12 a person. So, you know, you, you can do the math and if you're getting people in for 10 to $12, it's just a matter of kind of how many people do you want before you hit critical mass or you want to stop it for a while or whatever. Um, you know, different verticals have different costs per leads. Um, dentists with a nice hook like this are, are on the lower end. Um, I'm not saying every lead you're going to get for $10, but um, you will get pretty cost effective leads. Um, if you have the type of service that is, uh, that a single touch point with your audience is effective here. Like we don't need to take the users on a journey here. It's pretty evident, right? Come in, get a teeth cleaning, get your free teeth whitening for life. Like people generally know what the dentist is about and know that that's a good offer. And uh, the last thing is this is not boosting a post. So Facebook has made it really easy to just boost posts for anybody to do. Um, and the, that's great, except that a lot of the benefits you get from Facebook advertising, you can't do if you're just boosting a, point, a post. For example, this product, lead ads, you can't, you can't make a lead post and then boost it. So you have to create a Facebook ad account, and then you create ads within the Facebook ads manager interface. Um, it is slightly more complicated than boosting a post, but it's much, much more effective. And um, it's, it's 
it's the way to get the most cost effective Facebook ads. Um, and then speaking of which, if you wanted to figure out how to set up ads manager, so it's not that hard to do. Um, Facebook has great documentation. There's the URL at the top of the slide here. They have extensive documentation on how to set up an ad account and each step of the way. I really like how their documentation is done. Um, basically, you can, there's links to do each thing um, and it's chronological in terms of how you would set up your campaign. So you can basically just spend an hour on this page, just clicking each link and doing each task and you'll have your, your ads manager set up. And again, I, I can't say enough how, how much more effective it will be to run ads out of their ads manager interface than it will be to just boost a post. Okay, so we, we looked at the basic campaign. So this is pretty simple, single touch point, pretty self-evident hook. Um, so for dentists, that's often enough. Um, for many verticals, though, you're going to need something more advanced. So um, Rob mentioned a lot of people need to see an ad six to eight times. So in this case, we are showing the same ad to people multiple times. So it's not like uh, when I say single touch point, I don't mean they're only going to see it once and then never again. But um, for some verticals, you need to kind of change up the messaging and you need to take users on a journey. Um, in some cases, you need to lead, you, don't, you lead with something other than an offer. So we'll look at that. So basically you are creating a funnel, right? And a funnel takes users from uh, leads to prospects to customers. This generally involves three or more ads. Um, the top of funnel, which is your cold audience ad, so that's the yellow bucket where you're, this is awareness, right? You're just making people aware of who you are. Oftentimes you're not making an offer here. You are literally just trying to get your brand in front of people and provide something of value. Um, leading with value is one of my favorite tactics. Uh, middle of the funnel, so this is your warm audience, now consideration. So these are the people that now know about you because of your top of funnel ad. Um, now you're gonna make them an offer. And then the bottom of the funnel is the hot audience. So these are people that you actually have made an offer to and they've engaged with it in some way. And now you're kind of, but they haven't quite tipped over. Again, that six to eight times, right? That people need to see your messaging. So now you're tipping them over with some final messaging. Um, generally for your funnel, you're gonna test multiple cold audiences. So for the dentist campaign, um, like I said, it's pretty, pretty broad in that everyone needs a dentist at some point in their lives. So we tested some generic interests and we tested a lookalike audience. Uh, depending on your vertical, you may wanna test multiple audiences to see which ones respond to your ads. Um, and then you kind of scale up the ones, the audience tests that are working well and turn off the ones that aren't. And retargeting based on previous actions. So again, you're, the people in the, that green bucket and that blue bucket, they're there because they engaged with the bucket on, above it. So here's an example of a three-step funnel that I ran for a client. So the client's name is Social Report. They're a social media management tool. So they're, I don't know if you've ever used anything like Hootsuite or Buffer. Um, they're a competitor of theirs. Um, so on the left is ad number one. So this is an, a blog post they wrote about the best tools for social media marketers in 2018. So yes, they name themselves as one of the best tools, but they're not, they don't make themselves number one, they're just in the list. The primary purpose of this ad is to uh, make people aware of their brand, Social Report, and to provide something of value. Here's a list of 10 tools that can help you do your business. So this not only creates goodwill and provides value, but it gets your audience to kind of step up and self-select as somebody that might be interested in your product. Because if somebody is gonna read an article about the 10 best tools for social media marketers, they probably use social media marketing tools. The product that we're trying to advertise is a social media marketing tool. And so you've basically segmented an audience of people out of the, the wide area of Facebook that are people that would use your product. The middle ad now goes, is delivered to anybody that engaged with the first ad. 
So people that saw the first ad and don't do anything, they drop out of our funnel, right? You know, we, we try to offer value. We're doing a very soft sell and that we're not making an offer at all up there. If they just, if they don't want to read an article about social media tools, then they're probably not the right audience for us. So, but the people that have engaged with that, we give them this middle ad. So this is a direct offer. Now we're using the, I love them. I love emojis in my ads. Um, I, I personally don't like emojis, but emojis are really effective in ads. So pro tip, um, use emojis in your ads. So here we're using the heavy check mark <laughs> to go through all the benefits of the product. Um, and we're, and then there's a call to action to go learn more. And that takes you to a page on their site that lists even more features and functionality and a, a form to go ahead and, and go into a free trial. Um, this free trial requires a credit card and then starts billing after 30 days. So it's a little harder to get people into the free trial. Um, but, but the people that get into it are more committed. Um, so there's a couple ways to approach that. This is again, a little trickier because you require a credit card. And because of that, we have step three. Um, so step three is people that engaged with step two, but did not sign up. Um, so they have now engaged with two pieces of, uh, of creative and, and messaging. Um, and they have gone to the page and they have looked at that form and they've probably started filling it out and they just, for whatever reason, decided not to. Um, a lot of the people, according to our analytics, start filling out the form till they find out that you need to enter a credit card and then stop. So these people were definitely interested, but they need a little more convincing. So the ad on the right here has a testimonial and then a call to action to go look at a whole other page of testimonials. So we're not taking people back to the sign up page. Um, first of all, you don't want to have an ad um, sending people right back to the place that your last ad did. Um, second of all, we just, we want to, we want these people to just become overwhelmed with the positive feedback that our product gets. So we're sending people back to a page that is just testimonial after testimonial about how great the product is. And yeah, there is a small, there's a little link to go sign up. So we make it easy for people to get back to that sign up page, but um, it's not designed as a sales page as much as it's designed as just a, a, a page of convincing. Um, and this together works very, very well. So the, the cost per sign up uh, for the bottom of the funnel is amazing, but um, to get people to the bottom of the funnel, you have to deliver the first couple of ads. Um, we do get signups from that top ad. People read the article and then go sign up. That does happen. Um, but you get cheaper signups in the middle and then cheapest signups at the bottom and the whole thing works together. So uh, finally, success is about more than just the ads. So there are other things you'll need to consider, um, such as testing creative. So um, as you could probably tell from that last slide, I like people and faces. I've always found that people buy from people and they respond well to faces. Um, but faces don't work for every vertical and some faces work better than others. And so the, the ads that I've shown you the dentist ad, we just rolled out and it worked. And like I said, with a basic campaign, you can often do that. The social report ads up there, we tested a lot of different images. Those were the winning images. Um, testing copy. So again, in each of the ad examples I showed you, um, there were multiple versions of the ad copy and I showed you the ones that worked the best. Testing audiences. So went into this a little bit already, but uh, we've tried uh, audiences based on different interests, such as different social media products. We've tried um, lookalike audiences. So again, this is people that Facebook think are, are similar to your customer list. We've tried lookalike audiences based on the client's email list. So people that are similar to the people that are on their email list. So we've tried a total of, gosh, 15 or 16 audiences with this account. And we're currently running to four of them. So we've kind of wheedled it down to the four that did the best. Um, pixel tracking. So this is, uh, this is a, whole, a whole nother thing. Um, the Facebook allows you to put their pixel on your website. That's a small piece of code, tracking code. And um, if you do that, they will start to learn who your target customer is and they will start to be better at finding them. 
Um, it also gives you more advanced reporting. So if Facebook is seeing all the actions that take place on your website, they can report back to you, not just that somebody clicked on the ad, but what they did afterwards. So we get, we have pixel tracking on the social report website. We, uh, we can understand, for example, the, something I mentioned in the last slide, that a lot of people start to fill out the form and stop when they get to the credit card. We know that because we have the Facebook pixel on the site. So getting it on the site and kind of troubleshooting it when it isn't working right and configuring it to work right um, is something that, another thing that will help in the success of your ads. And again, with the dentist ad, no pixel on the website because we never actually send people to a website. We're, we're using that lead ad product and people are never leaving Facebook. Uh, conversion rate of your landing page. So again, we're getting people to a page that has a form on it. Um, we want to make sure that that page is optimized for people to sign up on that form. So, and if it isn't, then you want to figure out why that is. So a, a typical, a typical conversion rate for a sales page is 1%. So one out of every hundred people should sign up. If that's not happening, you want to look at why, if it's, if it's more than that, you're doing great. Um, a typical conversion rate for a free trial or a form like the one that we're offering um, is 20%. So if you're, well, I take that back. It's 20% if you don't require a credit card. It's less if you do. But you, um, there are easily available that benchmarks out there for how your page should convert. And then if it's not, you want to look at why not and troubleshoot it. So my my company, we are Facebook advertisers. However, I get involved in things like the, customer, the client's landing page, and if, if it's not converting well, why not? And my background is actually prior to marketing web product development, so I have pretty good insight into why a page does or doesn't convert. Uh, and then when and how to retarget. So, you know, we sh I showed you the funnel and I showed you the people that, you know, engaged with this ad, get that ad, and the people that engage with that ad, get this ad. Right, so um, when and how you do that is important. You do want to get six to eight or more times in front of your audience. You want to meter it out so that you're hitting the audience at optimum times. And there are also some benchmarks on how to do this, but every audience and every vertical is slightly different. So you test and you see. So in our case, um, we are getting in that particular case where the middle ad is going to people that engage with the top ad um, a, a one to two weeks before. And then the bottom ad is going to people that engage with the middle ad within 24 hours. So just kind of playing with the cadence to get the, the optimum results is another thing to consider. And then ad fatigue. So yes, again, you want to get your messaging in front of people at least six to eight times, but sometimes you need to switch it up. Um, people will get tired of seeing the same ad over and over with the same person in it and the same copy. And you want to, you want to understand the warning signs of when that's happening, what metrics you're looking at to tell you we might be exhausting this, this creative, or we may be exhausting this audience. If the audience is small enough, it may be time to find a new audience. So just understanding what to look for and what to do about it is again, part of the sort of holistic Facebook ads program. Um, so that is it for me. Um, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, again, Alex Afterman. So I, my company manages Facebook ads for clients. Um, and I would be happy to talk to anybody about that. We also do one-on-one -on -one consulting. So, um, if you, if you want to do your own ads, um, but you just want a little help and a few shortcuts and get there a little faster, we absolutely do that. Um, just in terms of some general benchmarks. So the, the clients that we're doing the full program with, at the low end, we're looking at ad spends of about, at the low, low end, 1,200 a month and up into the 50, 60, 70,000 a month. Um, most of our clients land somewhere in four to 10,000 a month in ad spend. And then on the consulting side, it's anyone at any level because we can always help. So thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And uh, back to you, Rob. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. And I highly recommend Alex. He's a master at Facebook ads. We've used him and he's been a delight to work with. So um, I'm going to continue now. And I wanted to uh, segue into um, the next part of this. So uh, dressing you up for success, making a positive first impression. 
The best tool we've found, as I mentioned previously, is Canva. You can find it at canva.com. <clears throat> some of the things we like so much about it is, number one, it's so easy to start. I mean, I, for an awful lot of what I do, I've been using the Adobe suite of tools, and I've been using them for you know a couple decades. So, uh, so I know them pretty well. I can do things very quickly, but I found that I can do them even faster using Canva. And because everything is stored in one place, it's a lot more convenient. So uh, Canva is designed specifically to be really easy for novices to use it. And it's got a really innovative and inner intuitive interface. Um, everything is drag and drop. And they've set up different levels of usage for, for people like you. Uh, you would want to select on small business. <clears throat> It only costs $9.95 a month to use. Uh, the, you can also use it free. Uh, you just, uh, you can't use some of the other cool aspects of it uh, in the free version. So I do recommend, uh, you know, springing for the $10 a month for it. So let me show you some examples of what I did. So um, two weeks ago, I showed you an ad that I'd just thrown together um, while I was preparing the webinar that I'd done for you. And it was inspired by this, you know, graphic that I was going to use on one of the slides. And it evolved into this idea for a new product called It's About Time. So I went to Canva and I said, okay, I want to create an identity, a logo and a unique treatment of the name. So I went in and I selected an image from their database of photographs and illustrations and icons. And I found the shape of a clock that I like, and I simply dragged it into the field. And then I was able to go in and change the color of it and add some text next to it. Uh, so you can see the results here. And I know from past experience, I've done a lot of identity programs that I wanted the identity to be formatted for both use horizontally and vertically, because sometimes you end up with tight spaces and you need one or the other. So again, it was simple drag and drop that allowed me to do that. Now they also have this other really cool feature um, called the brand kit. So if you're creating an identity for your business or an identity for or graphic look and feel for your offer, you can go into the brand kit. You can create very quickly a very limited palette. I always recommend a limited palette because then it makes your whatever you're doing easier to recognize and spot. So you can do that. You can I sort through a whole bunch of different fonts and sizes and treatments and such. And you can see here that I decided to go with catamaran in a medium size for headlines, for subheads. And then I have a lighter weight that I use for body copy. And then below that, you can see where I've created some logos and some images. And that's all stored here in the brand kit so that whenever I need anything, it's very easy um, uh, to get to and it's very accessible. And I've got all the key elements that I wanted. I've got the colors, the fonts, the logos, et cetera, all stored in one convenient place. And it's online. So if I wanna access this stuff from my phone or somebody else's computer, you know, I, I'm fine. I can work anywhere. The other great thing is they've put together some really nice tutorials. They're very simple, uh, they're short, um, to the point, and they've done a great job. So from zero to 60, it's hard to imagine another place where you can be creating fantastic professional looking graphics. Um, so I, um, that's another nice benefit from it. So I wanna show you a few other things. So here's an example of a business card that I was doing. So I don't know who Rebecca Belltower is, um, but <laughs> she's the team leader for it. Get, it's About Time. So I wanted to create a nice uh, business card treatment, but I wanted the backside to have kind of a nice surprise, you know, something that 
um, encouraged a little bit of the story. So I found this image um, in the database at Canva. I dragged it into the, uh, the business card template. Oh, by the way, all you have to do to create a new item is go through their menu of templates and it'll automatically um, set it up the right size, formatting, aspect ratios, that type of thing. So it takes all the guesswork out of that. So it was very, e it was e very quick and easy for me to create uh, this really cool looking back of the business card. And, you know, I have the call to action or the mantra, you know, no more to do lists um, pre formatted for it. So this is the front and the back side of the, uh, the business card that I designed. So it's all ready to print. It's, uh, a pro, it's already formatted at the appropriate resolution, the trim marks, all that stuff. You can even order it through Canva directly through their website. I could order 250 business cards for 30 bucks and have them delivered in a week. Okay. So other things you can do with it too. It's super fast for formatting. So it took me about five minutes to create this social media ad that you see here. So I've got my mantra, my, my headline in there. You can see the offer is mentioned, the online time management course saves three weeks and three hours, a link to the website, and I've got the identity. And I found another image that I liked that um, I, I really like the contrast here. But it's also super easy to modify and resize. So they have this cool feature called the Abracadabra Resize. When you click on that, it'll ask you what you want to do, what you want to create with it. In this case, I wanted to create a square online ad that I might use in a publication that I want to do some advertising with. Now, this can be formatted for use online, but also it could be used for a fractional print ad, too. Now, by clicking on Abracadabra, I could automatically take that same content and reformat it for an online leaderboard ad. Now, to be honest with you, I did go in and I did make a few additional adjustments because I'm a designer, so I wanted things lined up just right, but it did. 90% of the work for me automatically. I love that feature, such a great time saver. Okay, so I highly recommend canva.com. Uh, Again, I'm not getting any money out of this. I'm just trying to help you be more efficient and be more successful and make a really positive first impression with all of your marketing materials. So the other thing you wanna make sure you're finalizing is your simple marketing plan. Here's what we went through last week. You know, this example is for an accountant. We identified where the audiences might be, what they might be doing and thinking, where they might be searching for the solution, and then where they might go for validation. So we want to make sure that we're doing some marketing stuff appropriate for each of these contexts. That way, you're moving people through the funnel that, uh, that Alex presented so nicely. Okay, now the other thing, you've heard me mention it a few times, you wanna make sure your website is up to date. Um, hopefully you're working with a CMS platform, something like uh, Wix or Squarespace or WordPress, something where you can go in and update it yourself. So you wanna update some of the headlines and some of the text and put some of your new graphics in there. And again, keep in mind that you want it to be iconic. You want the business name and identity to be true to that. You want your key claim or offer to be iconic, the description, the imagery that's associated with it, and so on. Now, what you see here on the website to the right, so I created that website um, on Wix. So it was very quick and easy. And then some of the graphic images that you see there and some of the stuff I did um, in Photoshop we're done with Adobe Suite um, products. Here's the thing. I could have saved myself so much time if I'd done it in Canva and then just uploaded these images into Wix or WordPress or whatever platform you're using. Okay, so there's a, a tip to save you time. 
So the other thing you want to think about is the flow of information. So when people go to a website, they typically decide whether they're going to engage within two to three seconds. So if you don't grab their attention and give them a reason to read further, they're off to the next website or next page or what have you, and you may have lost them. The bounce rate for most websites that we've had any interaction with is 60% or more, which means that even the ones where we've optimized, they still have trouble capturing people's attention and engaging you know, the regular visitors that come to it. So it's really important to be as iconic and powerful as possible. So here's the flow that we recommend. You know, begin with your remarkable offer headline, your subhead that pays off and explains it, provides a bit more detail, and then what you're doing um, or presenting it, what makes it exclusive, unique, why people should focus just on you as the provider of whatever it is you're doing. And then, of course, you want to help sell them. So you want to give them three supporting claims that convince them, oh, this, look at these additional reasons why this makes so much sense for me. And then you want to make sure that the natural skeptic in everybody has those intellectual checkpoints um, taken care of, tangible examples of why this will work for them. And then validation from other sources. If you've got endorsements or testimonials, that type of thing, you definitely want to use those. And then, of course, you want to have a strong and simple call to action so they'll take the next step. Okay. So, and contact info. So, um, if you want continued help, um, I want you to... Uh, you know, we're happy to work with folks beyond this course. On Thursday, we'll be doing our Q&A session, providing additional information. But I also want you to keep in mind that remarkable marketing requires some deep, deep thinking and thoughtful execution. So um, we have continuing relationships with many of our clients. If you're interested in that, by all means, let us know. We'd be happy to help you. So that's it for this week. Your assignment is to review and plus your work. Remember the discussion about Pixar and plussing. Um, you also you want to integrate plans for operational changes. We want you to maintain your faith in what you're doing. You can do this. You can do something that's going to be truly remarkable. Take a mindset, adopt a mindset that you're just going to be unstoppable. If you encounter obstacles, be like water. Go over, under, to the side, keep it going. And then, um, oh, well, apologies here. So um, I'm still looking for, uh, for examples of what you want to do for your launch. Send it to me at the email address here. I'm happy to answer additional questions live um, on Thursday. I want to set you up for success, and I want you attracting remarkable customers, clients, and patients who are then going to be attracting more. And just to remind you of where this all started, it started with a really ugly little product in the late 70s uh, that two Steves put together. They decided they wanted it to be remarkable, so they obsessed about it and how to market it. But also, they worked with fantastic mentors who taught them how to take it multiple levels up the ladder and look at the result today. So hopefully, you found this course to be really helpful. Again, don't get discouraged. This process that you may have gone through is typical and normal for everybody, and I go through it with each new venture or initiative I go through. So hope hold the faith okay so that's it um apologies here for the duplication there so um i've really enjoyed uh going through this course with you and sharing what i know i hope you've gotten as much benefit out of this as uh as i have and again if you have feedback on how we can improve it i've already got a bunch of ideas and i've heard a lot from some of you 
I would love to hear more, share all of your thoughts. And I would love to see examples of what you're putting to work and the results you're getting. So let's stay in touch, all right? Thank you very much. Rob Gamel, Adwater, signing off. Have a great one and best wishes. Bye now.